If you want to increase your viewer engagement, start driving traffic into your sales funnels, into your squeeze pages, driving customers to your website so they can call your phone. You know, if you can make more money, then you can use a lot of this stuff. But everything I said previously is so important because that's where it all starts. We have this, this whole misconception that when we say we look at a shiny car, oh, it just goes. Well, what, what's inside? You know, and what's inside of you that you can actually share? I actually kind of, ha I have this prediction that within the next 10 years, business owners are going to thrive by being extremely, extremely authentic with their customers because there's gonna be so much fluff and bullshit. Like you can already start to see it, it happening, that authenticity just cuts right through the mix and people can smell fluff from a mile away. So the more and more and more authentic, even to the point where it becomes spiritual, and I'm not talking about religion, even to, I'm talking about spirituality. Like when you develop the sixth sense, people can, can feel it and when you have it, they have it and you'll just attract people like a magnet. We're also gonna talk about how to develop the habit of creating value-driven content and putting it in your business. Has anybody here said, you know, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, I'm gonna do this, and then tomorrow you're at work. I mean, you're sitting, at, you're, you're in the truck, you're taking phone calls, you're dripping in sweat, you're, you're, you're running your crew, you're, you're, then you got a sales job, then this, then this breaks down. You're like, dude, I don't got time to shoot a video. And you might say something like, I don't got time to shoot a video. That, that's, because we don't see the value in it. I wanna, I wanna convince you to start a YouTube channel. And, convince you that there is so much value in this that maybe you can't see right now, but the long-term value is what I, what I wanna say is my time travel theory. This will really help build the value for it so you see it. Have you ever not taken action on something because you didn't see the value in it, but it was extremely valuable? I believe that time tra travel absolutely exists now, not physically, but through means of technology. It's unbelievable what's happened. This is deep. You can shoot a video on your cell phone and say something powerful. Like people don't understand the depth and power and responsibility that comes with holding a camera or ho holding your phone and shooting a freaking video and just uploading it to YouTube. You know, I understand there's, there's billions of views online of people playing with their cats. And you know, I like to watch him, Casey Neistat. Anybody here like that? So that guy's awesome, right? It's very entertaining. It, it's artistic, it's real, it's authentic, it's raw. Imagine if you made a video and you told your story and five years goes by and you get an email that or even a voicemail, somebody found you, emailed, personal message you, and it's a grown man or a grown woman crying in their video saying, you know, in their message that they're bawling their eyes out because they just pulled a gun out of their mouth, their own mouth, they were gonna commit suicide, but your video stopped it. What if somebody was hooked on drugs and they were overdosing on a regular basis and maybe they were gonna die and your video stopped that? So my time travel theory and I talk about this responsibility factor, it's so deep because I'm beginning to understand that if you communicate something right now, like now exists, there's nothing else more than the now. But when somebody else is watching your video, that person who pulled a gun out of their mouth, they're watching it right now. And they're experiencing, and they're, the, the mirror neurons in their brain are actually, actually firing off, and they're experiencing everything that you are, were experiencing or were intending them to experience in the moment that you shot the video. Have you ever watched a movie and then you found yourself laughing or found, found yourself even crying or watched like a Tony Robbins video or something motivational, and you were like, yes, I'm gonna get it. Well, that dude's probably like, maybe he's doing something else or he's drinking a coffee or he's changing a diaper in that moment. He's not doing that right now. But why do you feel that way when you just watched a video that happened, you, know, you look, oh, that was made three years ago? Well, it's about time they put this video out. Like you ever read a good book or something and he's like, it's about time they made something like this. Or, this thing was made 20 years ago, you know? There, there are a lot of things in, in history like that. So that's my, my time travel theory. So when you begin to realize how powerful video is, 
I started to see it and, and it created this fulcrum shift for me where, oh my God, I'm not a, a window cleaning guy who happens to you, do YouTube and shoot videos, social media. I'm a social media guy who happens to clean windows. It starts tipping and I have probably, I don't know how many, 680 videos on my one channel and probably maybe 2,000 videos total. So essentially there's you know, 680 videos being played right now. As we speak, there's between 600 and 1,000 people watching every second of the day nonstop, just round the clock. You know, I posted a video with Joshua Latimer three weeks ago and it already has 14,000 views. I have videos with 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100,000 views that I shot with my cell phone. And it's, it's so, imp I'm impressed. I can't even believe it. It's, it's amazing to me that something like this is happening, but it's, because of the power of technology and the whole time travel theory. So what videos can you make in your business and what can you do when you understand that to the point where you realize if you, if you just make one video a week, at the end of you know, three weeks you have 12 videos. What's 12 videos gonna do? A lot if you market them right, if you tag and title and describe them right and you understand search engine optimization that your customer can see that video I go, ah, you know, I need my, my house washed, I need power washing, I need, I need pressure washing or window cleaning. Yeah, I like that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna click the link in the description below, because you're telling them, and it takes them to your web page, right? Okay, 15 minutes, I'm gonna get all into the tactics. Because does everybody here know how to start a YouTube channel? Raise your hand if you know how. Okay, so the number one uh, uh, search platform in the world is obviously Google. Number two is YouTube. You need a Gmail account? Get your Gmail account started right away. Uh, you can name it your business or something different. I have 14 different email accounts, all for specific purposes. People think I'm crazy, but I understand when you have that much traffic, you have to put it in different, you know, you have to segment it. Start a YouTube account and then put it on your phone Write this down, have the YouTube app, but you also need the YouTube Creators app. It's awesome, you can view your analytics, you can see everything that's going on inside of your channel, all the way down to the target, the demographic, who's watching, when, why, the age groups. It's so deep, it's, it's crazy. Um, I want you to start shooting one video a week minimum, and it could be just on a job site. I wanna cover something real quick. When you're shooting on job sites, it's not against the law to shoot on people's property as long as you're standing in front of what the eyes can see or what Google Street View can see. You know, if you're over someone's fence in their backyard, now you're shooting on private property and it's considered on a case by case basis that, is it illegal? No, it's actually a gray area still because they haven't even developed laws for this stuff because so many people are doing it, they don't know how to deal with it. So unless it's malicious or destructive or you're slandering or talking bad about your clients or sharing personal information, it's not illegal. So, uh, now everything I'm saying right now in this moment is obviously completely subject to change. So I wouldn't suggest shooting you know, videos in people's backyards because if it does get you know, 50,000 views, and someone sees it, you know, that's my Aunt Martha's house, you know. They send the video to Aunt Martha and they see you talking and, and she goes, that's my deck, that's my barbecue grill. Like people can go, especially private people who are in the legal field, like attorneys and, and lawyers and things like that, or people that, you know, maybe stuff in their basement, you don't know. These people can go into an absolute panic and they will get on the phone with their attorney immediately and you got, you're in deep shit, you know? It hasn't happened to me, luckily, because I have, when I hit 100,000 views, I woke up in a complete panic attack and I started realizing all this stuff. Oh my God, my channel is huge liability. I'm gonna get sued. I'm waking her up in the middle of the night saying that, oh my God, I'm, I'm not even really making any money at this stuff, you know? I'm making a couple bucks now at it, but then, it, I mean, you can't handle something like that, but still it's on a case by case basis. You can over polarize and start to think, you know, if I'm running around shooting videos, what if my employees see it? What if, what if people see it that I don't want to see it? And I want to talk about real things and get things off my chest. That's what people are afraid of, right? Is to talk about real things and somebody's seeing it. 
So I would suggest something that I have is uh, we disclose that we shoot video and we do social media on all of our contracts and proposals now. It's called a media uh, release form. Use uh, your personal name, the name of your business, use the name of your corporation, put it on there and say, you know, check the box if you do not wish to participate in us uh, doing, you know, social media, posting pictures online or on Facebook or Instagram or anything or on your website of somebody cleaning the windows, right? Keep street addresses out of it, keep people's, you know, like, uh, you know, you see two street signs crossing. Well, that's bad because anybody can now look in the video, type in those two street signs, zoom right in, drive and they can find that house and, you know, potentially something bad could happen. Or maybe if you get, you know, in my case, we don't have any of our personal information online. You'd have to dig really deep to find it. Everything's routed to my office and because I don't want people showing up at my house and hey, I saw you on YouTube, you know. The, the other day I come home from work and there's a guy who walks up by my trucks and he's just shaking my hand and talking to me and everything. I'm like, you know, I don't know where that guy came from, but that's kind of an extreme example. But what, what is our, um, I want to tell you kind of exactly what it says. Eight minutes here. I'm going to um, create a, a video and I'm going to talk about this stuff and I'll add it as a free download. Look for it in the near future and or I'll even just show it in my video and then you can read our descriptions so you can actually, you know, let the customer know, hey, we sometimes we take pictures, we post it on Facebook, sometimes we do videos and we put it on YouTube because this whole social media thing is getting so big that it's a way that we market to, you know, to our customers. We don't post street signs, we don't post uh, license plates and things like that. You're fine. If you wish to opt out, then we won't do it. No big deal. See how like, calm I was with that? You know, I don't get into this whole description. I used to be paranoid around customers when we started doing it saying, ah, screw it, we would just want videotape here. But, it's so, I'm so glad we include it in the contracts because, and I believe that you should too, because I do have some houses, it's like, you know, 850 bucks to clean the windows, huge house. They are attorneys. They live in a, like a prestigious area of Michigan. And they're like, absolutely not. I'm like, Whew, glad thing, because I was about to pull out a video camera and say, right on their fucking property. And uh, that's another thing I don't want to get into right now. A lot of people think that stuff is funny and it's me just, you know, being myself. Um, and when you get to that point where you really start getting into it, then you just don't care. You might lose a couple customers, but I believe that you're going to attract so many people. I wouldn't uh, suggest doing that in your videos when you're trying to sell and market to people, but <laughs> don't be like the, the car salesman guy who's like, Hey, welcome to the blah, blah, blah. And the, you know, the new Volvo, it, like nobody wants to hear that when you see that it's fluff and people just shut the video off. It's just talking into the camera. So start your YouTube channel. I want you to start creating one video per week, minimum. When you're on a job site, when you don't have time, uh, you can plan it out. Me, I'm a more impulsive person. An emotion comes through me where something will happen. A little pinch will happen in the business that, that just like pisses me off. And I say, I know I'm not the only guy going through this. I gotta shoot a video right now. Dude, I'm Keith Kelfus. I'm on a job site right now and you're not gonna believe what just happened. Uh, we're climbing this ladder and I can't get this screen off. And I sat there for a while in anxiety and I learned there's all different types of screens, but I'm gonna show you now how to actually take the screen off because I learned how to do it and I don't want you to go through the same thing I went through. You know, and when you get the moment and the impulsion to shoot the video, you can do it directly with your phone. A quick tip here is if I hold my phone on in selfie mode and I'm pointing it at my, my left shoulder, uh, did anybody know what the rule of thirds is? So when you're looking at a camera screen, you can actually pull it up on your cell phone so you can see it. Uh, there's quadrants, six quadrants. You don't want to be the talking head in the center. You actually want to be on the top left or the top right would be your, your eyes, your face, you know, your head. So people can see what's going on behind you. There's an environment happening behind you. You know what I'm saying? And for me, that's at pointing at one of my shoulders. Shoot the video, talk about something. This is how you open a video in the most generic way. Uh, Hi, I'm Joe with Joe's Window Cleaning, and today we're here on a job site. Here, I'll show so you have a prop. Today we're here on a job site, and, and we're, we're actually, actually uh, you know, power, power washing this, this driveway. 
And the, the reason I'm making this video, you can say it, the reason I'm making this video is because I want to show you a before and after. You know, we're really passionate about what we do, but, or you can name the video, three things you must know before hiring a power washing company, right? So you got the keywords in there, power washing company. Three things you must know before hiring a power washing company in uh, say where I live, Shelby Township, Michigan, 48315, things like that. And, and you can put, also put it in the tags, power washing with the zip code, 48315, whatever your zip code is, tag all that out. I wanna show you before and after. Here, here Bob is over here, he's, he's our, one of our right-hand man, men, and he, uh, he's power washing. But look how dirty, and to get them right up inside of the action, the customers so like, yes, because they know that their stuff is, is filthy outside, and they're embarrassed, they got a party on a Saturday or in a month, they want it done. Take them right up in it and see this grime and this grit and this algae and all this, and this is caused from this, and, and look around and say, but this is what it looks like after. Before, after. So. If, if you want a quote, we get free, you know, we get free estimates. Click the link in the description below. It'll take you directly to our website where you can, you know, call us up, get on the phone with one of our staff, and we'll come out within the next, you know, 24 hours. We'll give you an estimate. We'll get you taken care of. Again, my name is Joe with Joe's Window Cleaning and Pressure Washing. Thank you very much for watching this video, and uh, I'll see you soon. It's simple as that. When you talk like that, the person who's watching it says, Versus everybody else on Google, who, that's nothing more than text. If you've got videos popping up, and they can go on your website, see videos, they can go on YouTube, maybe you've got it on Facebook ads, they actually go, well, I'm gonna give this guy a call, if they resonate with you, versus somebody that's just text. It's happened in my business. I have a um, YouTube channel for the window cleaning business and a YouTube channel for the landscaping business. We're all optimized on blogs, wordpress.com, and on Tumblr. And it all populates in, in the search engine so people see it and then they can hire you. And then there's more of a chance that when you show up, they feel like they already kind of know you. You know what I'm saying? There's a chance that um, you're gonna attract like-minded people. Second here. I want you to write down, here's a couple books I want you to read, or audiobooks. Michael Hyatt, H-Y-A-T-T. -T. He has a book called Platform, Getting Noticed in a Noisy World, phenomenal book. The guy's a social media expert. Listen to that while you work. It'll just blow your mind and open you up. You can get into audio podcasts, look up John Lee Dumas. Another phenomenal book that I actually read the entire thing sitting inside of Barnes & Nobles. I'm just like sitting there. I couldn't even. Uh, jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. Read all his books. Read all his stuff immediately. It's a must. You have to read it. Who's that? Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V. Watch some of his stuff on YouTube. He's like cutting edge of exactly what's going on. And basically, some people will make a video and then they'll share the link on Facebook. Then they'll share the link here, 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 here. And then they're wondering why they're not getting any viewer engagement. Why is nobody going to this? Each different social media platform has its own native language. If you go up to a gorilla and you try to hand him, I don't know, let's see. What would a gorilla not eat? Turkey leg. A what? Turkey leg. Turkey leg. You give, a, give a gorilla a turkey leg, it doesn't do anything. If you give a gorilla or a monkey a, a, a banana or something that they love, they're gonna, they're gonna eat it because now you're communicating with them in their native language. So each social media platform has its own native language. YouTube, videos, entertainment, now. By the way, keep your video, uh, YouTube videos, if you can, under two minutes and 20 seconds. Unless you're hanging, hanging your content on a framework and giving them a past, present, future, or before, after, and really drawing them into a story. Uh, if you're planning on selling somebody something very specific, if you have really long videos and long copy, uh, people will buy, like they'll be ready to buy at the end of that, but make sure you have all that structured out before you make a long video, have it planned out with calls to action. That's uh, kind of later on in the game, but keep your YouTube videos short and sweet because you're communicating with people that are 
jumping out of hot air balloons, setting themselves on fire, people that are you know, crashing into stuff and doing wildly entertaining things that would just pull your attention immediately. Everybody is kind of ADD, people are in a hurry. If a soccer mom or somebody is looking for the windows clean and, and they're just looking real quick, they don't got time for this long drawn out thing. As soon as you press record, get directly into the action right now. We're talking right now, we're you know, right there. Don't go, um, they're gonna get out of the video immediately. It has to be instantaneously, okay? Okay, descriptions and YouTube videos. Well, first we'll go into t uh, titles. Title your YouTube video the name of the service. Title the YouTube video exactly what's in the video. Even if you have to go back and retitle the video again a little later when you're in a different state of mind, title the video not what you would think, but what increases viewer engagement when a customer sees it. There's something called clickbait. A lot of these YouTube vloggers and people use this. You, you click it and you're like, oh, that's not what was in there, but it got you to watch, right? Well. There's kind of black hat and white hat SEO techniques, which is, you know, the perfect way to do it, and then the dark way to do it. That's just, it doesn't work anymore. Google's algorithms, the the panda, the penguin updates, and all these things, they catch on to all that. Don't buy Facebook ads. Don't buy YouTube likes. Don't spend money on any of that stuff. It has to be almost 100% organic. You can go gray hat SEO, which is it's a mix between white and black, where you know what I mean, like plagiarism, don't do that. But do take and repurpose your content. If you take a video and you put it on YouTube, you title it something that is the keyword, like window cleaning in Bloomfield Hills. How to do this when you clean windows. I'm the number one search result for window cleaning because I put window cleaning tutorial. Then in the description, window cleaning tutorial. In the tag, window cleaning tutorial. So now I dominate those keywords literally worldwide because they're throughout everything. Also take the name of your video itself, the actual video file, and name it Window Cleaning Tutorial. Put it inside of a folder, and then when you upload it, Google's algorithms can read all that, and then it says, oh, this, this is legitimized. It's gonna take about 90 days for all this stuff to start to populate in the search engines and start to index, but once you get it, you start developing, developing something called momentum. The algorithm will percolate as well. So if you are going in one direction, then all of a sudden, oh, I'm gonna start talking about personal life. I'm gonna start doing this, or I'm gonna start you know, a whole new service. It's actually gonna demote you in the search engines because now you're diffusing the energy, you're diffusing what's happening inside of the algorithm. So keep it consistent and keep building momentum to the point where it'll take off. You'll notice it populating in the search engines. Okay, we got couple minutes, I'm going to wrap up and we're going to Q&A. Repurposing content. Take your YouTube video and never post the link to Facebook. You know, they're almost like competitors. Someone posts a YouTube link, nobody watches it. Take the raw video itself and upload it directly inside of Facebook with a short description. YouTube description, long. All the keywords, everything, a story about what's happening exactly in the video, then underneath all your social media links. Your, your business Facebook page, your business Google Plus, your business's website, your business's squeeze page. Put, I'm talking anywhere from five to 10 URL links, HTTP semicolon forward slash forward slash so it becomes blue and clickable, takes people directly to the page, right? Make sure all your links work. And then underneath that, I want you to write an entire description about your whole company, a company bio, anything filled and packed with long and short tail keywords. Window cleaning, pressure washing, this, that, customers. Don't fake it. It has to be completely organic now. And then all the way to the bottom, you can fill it up, I think it's like 800 characters inside of YouTube. If you look inside of my videos, they are literally packed with information and links. So anybody who likes the native language of, they don't like Facebook or they don't like YouTube, but they love Instagram. They happen to see a YouTube video, but they really love Instagram. Oh, this company has an Instagram. Well, let's go some pictures. And then you have a bunch of pictures and video clips inside of Instagram, right? You could take one video and then put it on Facebook and then actually use something called the TubeMate app. T-U-B-E-M-A-T-E. -E. It's not in the app store. It's a kind of a privately sourced app. Get that app. Put it on your phone, and now you can go back and re-download the video from YouTube or extract videos from online, store them in your gallery, and then upload them to different social media platforms. So I take a video, I upload it to Facebook, and then I have something called the Power Director. That's my biggest secret, is I run my entire YouTube channel, all my social media, everything, no laptops, computers. It's all done completely on the cell phone. That's why, uh, now, 
My wife has a YouTube channel as well, and she gets frustrated because she has an iPhone and her storage is always full and you have to deal with that. Uh, if you get in the habit of regularly dumping data out of your phone, you have to get in the habit, save it, back it up, and keep your phone clear. So when you want to make a video, you're like, damn it, uh, uh, the card is full. Like, uh, I, I'm carrying around tons of SD chips and crazy stuff all over the place. Make sure you get some good high quality SD chips so you can go back, upload your videos. Maybe you could spend uh, half a day and shoot 10 videos and then just upload one a week for the next 10 weeks. You can batch the content. So with the TubeMate app, you can extract video, then you could use PowerDirector Studio Pro app. It's like six bucks in the marketplace and you could take snippets or trim and cut your video and, and take 60 second pieces of that and upload it to Instagram with a full description and then put your hashtags. So when people search, you know, uh, window cleaning or in this zip code, you optimize it and then people can actually find it right there, boom. Don't ever put hashtags in like stuff like Facebook and stuff like that. People don't know what they're doing and they're trying to emulate what they see in the marketplace. Then take the YouTube video with the description, put that in Pinterest. Then share it with a 140 character link and then put it inside of Twitter. And then take your description, optimize it with a italicized, bold, um, your clickable links and put that inside of a blog post. You can get a free blog at www.wordpress.org, start a blog immediately and start blogging in your business and just writing short, short articles, even if you do one, one a month about your business and about your services because people can go and learn more about you. You could take the same content, repurpose it and put it in your website. Uh, a Tumblr blog, T-U-M-B-L-R, T-U-M-B-L-R, everybody's seen Tumblr, it's a free blog, it's awesome. So take the same piece of content and repurpose it all across all the different platforms, but twist them so it's in their own native language. You'll hear it in uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's jab, 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 right hook. And then also you can extract the audio, if you wish, into something called the MP3 Converter app. It actually partners with TubeMate, and I got it on autopilot. It'll happen automatically when you download both. It'll ask you. And now you can extract the audio MP3 version of the actual video clip. And now you've got a podcast that maybe someone could click play and they could just listen to you talking or a 1-800 pre-recorded message. That's a whole nother thing. But I could go on and on very, very deep with this. We're going to get into Q&A here. Oh. Look, uh, write this down, Joe Polish, just like the word Polish, Piranha Marketing, phenomenal, amazing. If you want to learn copy, write down Dan Kennedy, uh, amazing stuff. You can watch some of his videos on YouTube, guy's like 60, filthy, stinking rich, he's a totally, brutally honest asshole, and that's why I love him, so, Dan Kennedy, amazing. No. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes you might not be ready for the stuff. Put it on your bookshelf, and when the time is right, or maybe in the winter, you can dive deep into it, and you'll see it happen in your business. Uh, start implementing everything I said into your business. Use contrasts and frameworks like before, after, then, now, past, present, future. Talk to people about where you're going, maybe your, 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 your company vision, uh, anything that you want to do that shows people a contrast. And be totally authentic. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Uh, if you want to look up Brene Brown's pre, uh, TED Talk, B-R-E-N-E-B-R-O-W-N, -E -E her book, The Power of Vulnerability, you can get it on audiobook. Just awesome. B-R-E-N-E, -E, Brene Brown. I'm aware that most people don't want to start a YouTube channel. A lot of people don't want to be on camera. They don't like it. They don't want to do it. Just do it. <laughs> I know it's easy for me to say, as you do it more and more, it's just like developing a muscle. You get to the point where you know, you're know you okay. I, I, I have friends that want to start YouTube channels all the time. They get inspired. Oh, dude, can you help me? Blah, blah, blah. I'm shooting videos. Uh, and I say, you know, make your first 10 videos or just make one video. But once you get past that point and you've done about 100 videos, you develop the point where you're just comfortable on camera and you're talking to a friend. If you don't do this in the next five years, everybody else will, and they will completely pass you by, and you will be sitting there on like page 50 in the search engines and be totally pissed off and frustrated because the marketplace has changed so much and social media will be dominating everything, so will authenticity. 
If you don't do this, you will absolutely pay for it and you will pay for it out of pocket. It will happen. Okay, we're pretty good here. I'm gonna see if there's anything else before we go into uh, q and I wouldn't suggest monetizing any videos until you have at least a thousand subscribers. So that'd be in my case, because if people see ads at the beginning of videos, it just doesn't work. Don't even think about it. Don't do it until, unless you're really just trying to get massive traffic. Uh, and where I'm at, I have to make money in what I do because uh, I probably put a solid 20 hours a week into social media and it's gonna get to the point where it's you know, totally tilting the fulcrum, like I said. But I have to make money now to uh, spread the message because it, it has to pay for itself. It's a business now. We're good, I think I cover enough. Cameras, just use your cell phone. You don't need any fancy cameras like this. This is the Sony RX100. You can get it for four to $500. Uh, it, it looks amazing. It, it looks like a movie. You, you go into Best Buy and look at all the cameras. It's called a handheld point and shoot. If you really like it, you don't even need the selfie stick. You can just hold it with a steady hand. It has stable mode inside of the camera. And you can, if you want your video quality to be higher, I think that these, uh, these Galaxy phones and these iPhones are phenomenal. You got these guys like Ty Lopez getting millions of views. I know he pays for ad traffic. He spent something like $1.9 million in the past year just on YouTube ads. Hey, I'm here in my backyard. Anybody see that guy? Yeah. Because he's taking all the money from the information products and he's dumping it directly back into uh, creating fame in exchange for you know, driving traffic into information products. Okay, we're gonna go into Q&A right now. I went a couple of minutes over. I just wanna make sure you guys learn as much and I wanna create as much value for po as possible for you. Hey, so you do all this video. Have mm -hmm. you ever written a book like how to make so much money in window cleaning? Or Drop my cap. Oh, there it is. What's that again? I said you do all this video stuff. Have you ever written a book like how to make $500 a day in window cleaning or anything like that? Does that sound familiar? <laughs> this book. Whoa! Hey. Hey. Nice setup. Yes. That's a great idea. This is my new book, uh, The Secret Formula on How to Make $500 a Day Cleaning Windows. It's, it's totally legit. I... I Ripped my own heart out to write this book, and it's a good 160 pages. It's step by step exactly how to do it. Anybody who's just getting started in the business, if they read this book, they will go out and they'll, they'll shave three years off of the frustrations in their business. I studied writing and publishing and how to write books for two whole years in preparation before I started writing books. Uh, this is my second book that's published. It's being sold all over the world right now and people are sending me pictures that they're getting it. It's just an amazing feeling, but really, so I, I just want to give back and share the information that I wasn't given when I got it start, started. I was pissed off and this is me kind of seeking revenge to say, hey man, here's the information. Take it and run with it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, I do have a GoPro Hero 4 and it's a phenomenal camera does all the stuff I actually put one on my drone and you can use it for anything you want take the SD chip out put it in your phone what kind of phone do you have with the hero 4 I actually think it's phenomenal and I've read all these views that the hero 4 has amazing audio quality I bought the the camera and I love it I know if it's inside of the case it's kind of muffled but it should, it should be absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. And the audio is a huge, huge thing. If you're standing, oh yeah, one more quick thing. If you're standing like 10, 15 feet away and you got your camera on a tripod and people can hear the environment and all, it doesn't work. That's why I have a lavalier mic. But in, in the videos, make sure you're up close and personal so people can hear because it's just as important as seeing. Next question. Really? I, yeah, I didn't handle it where I was like, I didn't handle the rejection. I was like, oh my goodness. Like, That's a really good question. Uh, it's never happened. Let me turn this back on. It's, it's never happened to me because I believe body language is uh, such an important factor. I don't know how the employee looked or what his body language or what his in, intentions were. 
I can totally understand and relate to that, and I think that maybe it was just kind of a, a rare thing that happened. Like I said, it depends on the customer, and that's why we have the release forms, and that's why, if I saw one, like, like I said, I got fired from a job for doing something like that, and now I'm like, oh my God, if one of my guys did that and I saw the videos, I'd have fired his ass too. But I didn't understand at the time. So yeah, I just tell them not to do it, roll with the punches, and that's, that's a good question because if you are very calm and relaxed and comfortable, when you shoot, like I can literally walk in restaurants and walk in places videotaping, and I do, and now it's at the point where people go, oh, that's cool, he must be one of those vlogger guys or something, right? But if you're nervous while you're doing it, you're gonna like emanate all this nervous energy and people are gonna look out their windows, they're gonna go, what the fuck is that guy doing? And, there, and it's gonna be real in that moment because you don't feel comfortable with it. So if you feel very comfortable with it, then they will too. Oh, he must be uh, shooting a video or something, right? Next question. Um, how long have you had your business? Landscaping, five and a half years. The window cleaning business has been four years now. Mm -hmm. Next question. Oh. Um, you mentioned that if we started adding different kind of content onto our channel, it would start going down. Should we have multiple channels? If you're talking like, hi, this is me starting my business and I'm going to walk you through yeah. it. And then the marketing side of here's uh, power washing in Clearwater. Okay, good question. So in the beginning, if you plan it out what you want the content to be in your video, you can put it on a rotating schedule, say uh, video one will be strictly how-to information. Video two or the next day, the next time you shoot a video, it will be uh, just talking and selling your business. Video three will maybe be a, a, a family event or so people can see into your personal life if you want. And you rotate that, but you have to choose what door you want to open or close. Same with uh, YouTube and social media. If you post, uh, I would put it all on one channel directly and don't split unless you hit like, like a million subscribers or something like that, or you have a very specific intention that where you want to segment the market. So you're absolutely fine with that. One channel. Yeah, one channel, put everything on it, unless it's stuff you don't want your customers to see. Okay, great, thank you. Is it always advisable for you to be in front of the camera or your product in front of the camera? Meaning your service. He, he asked, is it always advisable for you to be in front of the camera or your product? Or your service. Or you your know, like service? Out of he has out of door yeah. driveway or something like that. That's another good question. So, people post pictures and they post videos of, of environments or jobs happening or things happening, but the videos, even though, hey, you're showing results in advance, like uh, Billy Mays, the Kaboom Cleaner. Has anybody seen this stuff? Late night infomercials. He's like, look at this filthy sinking, you know, sink. Kaboom! And he cleans it and the thing is totally clean now, but he's actually showing you results in advance. So if you're showing somebody results in advance, where they go, oh, that's what the finished product looks like, they're gonna want to. And to add to it, if you have a personality behind the camera, taking them on a journey versus you just videotaping something, you know, because now it has to be like that, uh, the, the engagement will go up way higher. But no, it doesn't have to be, absolutely, you don't have to be on the camera, you don't have to be the face of it, but I would at least say be the voice or even put some text in there, something that shows before, after. Is that good enough? Yeah. Okay, next question. Do you find it, sorry. Wait, let me take him. Do you find it beneficial to analog your YouTube videos? I see now a lot of people are actually putting, they're basically typing out what exactly what's being said in the video and posting that below the video. Do you find that? Uh, like kind of like captions? Okay, basically from transcript, transcript live in the video. Yeah, good question as well. Are you talking about while the video is playing, you can see what the person is saying? It's basically typed in, like there's people that actually you know, the the have trans transcribed below that. Oh, in the description. Transcribed yeah. in the description of the, the YouTube video as opposed to just a regular description of the video. Heard of that yet? Um, I know about transcribers. I hire them virtual assistants to make to transcribe every word I said in a video. I'll pay somebody to transcribe all of it. So now I have it in text form so somebody can read it if they want. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're deaf and they can't hear and they have to read it. Right. I also thought you were asking, you know, you go on Facebook and now and you see text because now we're learning that 80% of people that watch Facebook videos at night or at three o'clock in the morning, they're not pressing the volume button. 
they're just kind of watching a video and they'll watch videos all the way through. It's crazy. So they started putting the text in because people are too lazy to press the button, right? It's just one more way that you can drill deeper and get, get what you want. Next question. Yeah, so it was 100% landscaping in the beginning and 10% window cleaning. I love window cleaning so much because I love how it's a, it's, a, it's a business you can systematize and process. It's something you could teach an employee how to do within a month or so. With landscaping, how do you prune a rhododendron or deadhead an azalea down to the vascular so you don't cut the bud and it doesn't bloom next year? What's the difference between a pack of sandra and a weed? All that stuff was driving me nuts because my guys would weed out garden beds and the customer's like, you ripped out all my freaking lilies. And I'm like, <laughs> So with window cleaning, obviously there's a lot of tension for new guys if you're going inside of someone's house doing like acrobats, cleaning a chandelier of a grand piano. I still make sure I do that stuff, but the window cleaning, I intentionally keep growing it. It's right now, it's about probably 60-40. 40% window cleaning, 60% landscaping, and I want it to totally tilt. Okay. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it, thank you.